Hello, my name is Robert Mwando, and as usual, I'm very glad to be bringing the Word of God to you. Thank you for joining us every Sunday for this online message. And uh, in the season of campaign and politics, where must a Christian stand? With crises such as COVID-19 pandemic, murders, child sacrifices, intrigue in governance, and all the moral questions in society. What is a Christian's responsibility? These questions and many more point us to the issues of governance. And today I would like to just share with us from the biblical perspective what governance is all about. Uganda, for the first three months of the outbreak of COVID-19, was one of the benchmark nations in Africa. We were able to keep infections as low as possible and avoided any fatalities. This can be attributed to the orthodox measures we undertook and for the three months followed religiously. Suffice to say it worked in our favor. Although we are still not hardly hit, thanks to the grace of God, I am deeply dismayed by how quickly the situation has degenerated. It doesn't, however, come across as a shock. It clearly portrays the degeneration of self-governance in our society. The concept of self-governance is often expressed in the context of groups, administrative divisions, autonomous territory or region. Seldom do we perceive it from the context of individuals, but self-governance is defined as the ability of a group or individual to exercise all necessary functions of regulation without intervention from an external authority. Today, I speak into the subject of governance, and my emphasis will be on self-governance, not in the context of group, but the individual. However, before we dive deeper into the subject, let me demystify politics. I delve into politics because it has a lot to do with governance, and we are in the middle of campaigns. The word politics comes from a Greek root, politika, which means affairs of the cities or affairs of the state. It has a lot to do with decision-making and power relations between individuals. It involves aspects such as the sharing of resources and status. It also involves policies, plans, and courses of action. I have grown up hearing the phrase, politics is a data game, and for the same reason I've been discouraged from being a part of it. But from the understanding of the subject as elucidated above, how can one be denied a right to be a part of the affairs of society on the account of a flimsy reason, politics being a data game? How then will a data game be cleaned up by data fellows if every upstanding citizen stands aloof? It takes sober, upstanding, honest men and women of integrity to change this narrative. Governance is rooted in God's nature, and the scripture has a lot to prove that. Psalm 22, verse 28. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he rules over the nations. Daniel 2.21 says, and he changes the times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. In Romans chapter 13, verse 1 to 7, in the New Testament, it is very elaborate. Apostle Paul writes about submission to authorities when his people, the Jews, were under Roman misrule. You would think that Apostle Paul was not a patriotic Jew. 
Under Roman oppression, you would expect a man of Paul's influence to lead the main opposition party and influence a defiance campaign of sorts, but he preached submission to the governing authorities. There are five key words in this portion of scripture. Number one, subjection to governing authorities. Number two, authority established by God. And three, laws are God's ordinances. Four, we see that governmental leaders are actually appointed by God. And five, governmental leaders are God's ministers and servants, according to verse four. In simple terms, governments represent God on earth. They are for law and order. They are for restraining sin in this fallen world. In verse 3, we see that for rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from fear of the one in authority? Then do what is right, and you will be commended. And verse 4 says, But if you do wrong, be afraid, for rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath, to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Governments exist to promote good. The question is, what if the government isn't promoting good? According to Apostle Paul, we still must submit as believers. Apostle Peter as well writes and says, Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme or to the governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and praise those who do good. For this is the will of God. But by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone. Love the brotherhood. Fear God. Honor the emperor. That is according to 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 13 to 17. Governments exist to serve the people. And governments also exist to be accountable to the people. According to 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 1 to 16. Governments exist to provide solutions to the challenges the people face. There are five major levels of governance. Level one is self-governance. Level two is at the family level. Then we have the church, the school, and the civil or political governance. Now, self-governance means disciplining yourself. And this is where I want to dwell for a little while. It means being self-controlled and casting off restraint. It means putting to death the passions of the flesh, crucifying the body, and putting aside self-ambition. Self-governance means putting on righteousness and being ready to serve others just as well as you would want to be served. Success or failure at all other levels of governance depends on how well individuals self-govern. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 28 says, Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. So we see that the failure in self-governance bears heavily on matters of the state. The degeneration in governance at civil, institutional, and family levels reflects the degeneration of values in self-governance at the individual level. Unless we first deal with self-governance, our systems at all other levels will remain in shambles. I challenge you today to commit to your civic responsibilities. These are not only civic 
but also spiritual responsibilities. What are these responsibilities? One, submission. Two, prayer. Three, honor to the authorities. Four, meeting your obligations, paying taxes. Five, offering ourselves for service. These responsibilities will be easy if we teach and learn personal restraint from excesses. Whether you sit on the throne, in parliament, supreme court, you are a doctor, you are a nurse, you are a teacher, a police officer, athlete, or an entertainer, you must learn to restrain yourself. Secondly, self-reflection or introspection. It is important for each one of us to take time to see how well we have governed ourselves. Number three, voluntary submission or surrender. That is giving ourselves to submit to the authorities or to surrender to the people that are govern us. Number four is obedience. We have to obey those that God has placed over us in authority. And number five, personal accountability. That is very, very critical. Most critically, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 2a, if it is implemented, which says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. The other part of the verse says, but when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. But we must implement the first part of the verse. Let's be the uh, righteous leaders that bear rule and the people will rejoice. I challenge everyone in leadership or aspiring to be a leader to be the righteous leader who will cause people to rejoice and not to mourn. Arise, shine, for your light has come. God bless you.